don't watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, but it's an interesting conversation they're having with um, Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. That's that's grown folk business. I don't. I'm not a fan of the whole series of of Housewife of Atlanta. I don't. I, I don't appreciate that. You know. I mean, shit. I wish I could get paid for my drama because I would be uh, uh, have a lot of money. <laughs> but I. I don't. You know, people look at drama and when it's on TV, they condone it and they love it. But when it's in real life and it's on social media or Facebook or whatever, and you're not rich behind it, if you can't make money behind your drama, people don't respect your drama. Like, people will criticize me for posting the things that I have posted, um, but then go turn on the TV and watch Bravo and watch nonsense. Because... It's television and people are always hypnotized and blinded by TV and people worship celebrities. People worship people who are on TV. So I could be saying some real shit, kicking real shit, exposing real shit, talking about real shit. And everybody, not everybody, because I have I have a decent amount of, of people who understand where I'm coming from and follow me religiously and stuff like that. But I'm not popular by any means. I just have a loyal few people. But you know at the end of the day i don't i don't i don't, don't want to say i don't like or i don't like the show and i don't approve but i can't say that i don't approve of the show because that's almost like being a hypocrite because if i don't approve of shows like the housewife of atlanta but i carry on similar drama in my personal life i have to admit i mean like i said i like to be very very transparent very open and very honest if somebody's right about something and it doesn't agree and they if somebody says something about me and they're right even if it's something that I don't like or derogatory I'm gonna admit that they're right when they're right um, so that being said uh, my homeboy pointed something out to me uh, again this morning and I told him like I keep telling people I don't I don't I don't want to you know when I'm doing well and I'm not being triggered I usually do something to trigger myself and then that's like a self-defeating cycle you know um, here's my thing and again this was acknowledged by someone someone older someone successful and mature someone that I respect that you know keeps keeps themselves private and said I'm just gonna put it out there Natasha if you would have minded your business okay you reached out to the woman in the very beginning she responded in a very ungodlike an unchristian like manner that should have been it for you but because of your triggers and because of your trauma past trauma in life you felt the need to go to war with someone because they did they tried to slight you they tried to taunt you they tried to hurt you through social media and you re and you responded what you should have done was left he said what you should have done was left the bitch in her tracks because he said she posted something that said something about when you try to come at evil but you only help bring people together so basically he said by you interfering with their relationship you actually caused him to treat her right because trust me he was going to take her for what she was worth and dump the bitch he said he's he showed her his ass more than once but because you kept interfering it caused them to cling closer together. And I get it, I, I said it myself actually, I think in a past vlog. I absolutely agree, but I don't have a problem with that. Again, I, there's a lot of stuff that I that I vlog about and I, and I make videos about that I haven't even posted because ugh, I don't have time a lot of the time, but by the time I have time to sit down and post things, it's, it, the moment has already passed. But I know that, I know that. And I said that before, and I think I did post something that said, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't even still be together. And I don't have a problem with keeping people together if they're meant to be together. That's not my decision. That's not, everybody thinks that, not everybody, but people that don't know me or know this, the truth or people that are only listening to her side of the story, about who I was or what, how I interfered. Don't understand, I didn't want the man. If I would have done the things that she did, I would still have been with the man, okay? If I would have asked him not to leave when he got up, slowly walked out, he wouldn't have left. If I would have bought him what he asked to buy, if I would have given and bought him and done 
and going through the ups and the downs and the and fought through the bipolar. If I would have done all that, I would still be with him. That's not what I wanted. Doesn't mean I didn't have emotions. Doesn't mean I didn't have feelings. Doesn't mean I didn't feel some type of way when I saw them together for the first time. Doesn't mean that da, 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 da. all it means is doesn't mean rejection. You could <laughs> the ego is a is a hell of a drug. Let me just say that. I made a video about that. I'm gonna post that one day soon. I made a, a my spirit guides were talking to me a few days ago and I made a vlog about it and I'm gonna post that too. A person's ego. Men aren't the only ones with egos. Women have egos. Believe that too. No one likes rejection. Even if somebody is rejected by somebody they actually don't really want. Okay, this is going to sound petty, but this is a fact and I'm going to put it out there because it's the truth. How many of us have experience where someone doesn't want you, but as soon as somebody else wants you, all of a sudden that person starts acting like they want you? That's called ego. And I have an ego too. It's not just men with egos. A man will not want you, but see you move on with another man and be happy and all of a sudden start looking at you like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had that first. That's all I was, I was going through two things. Ego, a bruised ego, and disrespect. Now I could have dealt with the bruised ego and moved on, but it was the disrespect behind it that made me go on a, um, a tirade of social media posts because remember I've had certain recordings for well over a year I had at the time when I first posted these recordings I had them for almost a year about nine months and I still didn't post them so that right there again just just clarifying shit because I don't like to be misunderstood and I don't like when people get it fucking twisted it's never been about oh I want the man she has it's always been about why would you disrespect me and push it in my face? And then she came along and did the same thing. Why would you disrespect me and push something in my face when I came at you? If I come at you with love and honor and respect, come at me the same way. End the story. But at the same time, I have to take responsibility for controlling my own actions. Because regardless of the shit she did, like my homeboy said, if you would have controlled your temper and literally just sat back and watched you would have seen he would have been done with her he would have been done but the interference that you caused caused them to cling together it caused a little bit of drama but they worked through it because he had to prove you wrong and she had to prove you wrong once you put their pride on the line and you put their shit on on blast it caused both of them to have to save face and save ego and that brought them closer together and I said, well, if that's the case, honestly, good. Because again, my goal was never, hey, let me break these people up. I don't have that power and I don't have that desire and I don't have that kind, I don't give a shit. My thing was, I really, honest to God, was trying to warn someone that I thought was making a bad move. Okay. He said, if you would have left it at that, they would have broken up already. And I said, well, you know what? It's funny how the universe works in mysterious. People will say God works in mysterious ways. When I say the universe, okay, let me say God so most people could comprehend what I'm saying. God works in mysterious ways because I'm still human and I still have an ego and I did enjoy rolling around with him. So let's say they did break up in a, in a way, not in a way. Me interfering and keeping them close together actually saved me because who's to say the nigga would have still, first of all, the nigga would have still been with me, like I said, if I would have done the thing she did, said the thing she said, hung in there and given him and done for him and, and bought him and buyed him. And if I would have done what she did, I would have still been with him. But thank, thank the gods. I I've lived too much and I've been through too much. I know better. So I allowed it to be done. And then I went, when I really, really, really was over with it, I said, let me go get my little bit of money so that I have no excuse to say this is why I'm holding on to any thoughts of him. So I took him to court and got my money. So all those things, like my friend was saying, you know, even my spirit guides told me, you know that's not who you wanted. 
Your ego got bruised and then you felt disrespected and felt you had to fight the disrespect. But this is not the man for you. And you knew that from a very, before she even, he even met her, you knew he was not the man for you. But you wanted to still get entangled with some physical sex and all that dumb shit. And yeah, 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 I made a vlog. I'm gonna post that right after I post, whenever I decide to post these, because it's true, okay? And, but all the drama was because of my trauma, my being triggered, not liking to be disrespected, and, and because of my ego. How dare you disrespect me, motherfucker? No, you won't get the last word, y'all motherfuckers, da 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 da, -da. But, like he said, and I said, look, this is my response to my homie. I said, look, sweetie, from what you just said, it's just more confirmation that nothing I did was in vain. Because if me interfering keeps them together, that actually is healthy for me because I don't want to ever be vulnerable. And I am a human being, I'm a woman and I'm vulnerable. I don't ever wanna be vulnerable to somebody that I know is unhealthy for me. So in a way, spirit was still guiding me and is always guiding me. Because if spirit said, do this, do this, do that, react this way, react that way, react this way, and I did all of that, and they're still together, good because let's say let's just say in a, in in another universe um they would have he would have left her alone and said you know what natasha she didn't do nothing but back off she i hurt natasha really badly i was disrespectful she backed off and she was like you know what let me just let this nigga go ahead and do him and be happy you know what natasha's a good woman let me let me call her back and apologize for the things that i said and did to her there's a slight chance there is a chance because, again, I'm human. There's a chance I would have been like, okay, even though I knew better, there's a chance I could have still been like, you know what? Because, again, and this, there's no, there's no shame in admitting when you're, when you're, um, there's no shame in admitting when you are human. I'm just admitting that I'm a vulnerable woman. I'm human. So, spirit in its own way see the spirit that people would say god spirit knows ways that we as human beings don't know a spirit knows way better than than we do our guardian angels know way better than we do so my guardian angels was still always protecting me because i don't burn bridges i blow bridges up and let me tell you why I blow bridges up. Because knowing that I'm a vulnerable woman, knowing that I am still vulnerable, if you know, and I did this with the married man too, I, I blew that bridge to smithereens. Because if you know that you are damaged and weak, and if you know that even if you know someone ain't, ain't, ain't good for you, and they're a horrible person towards you and they've treated you like shit. If you've been through abuse most of your life and an abusive person decides they wanna walk back into your life, there's a slight chance, no matter how smart you become, that you might give in. So if you don't blow the bridge up, don't just burn it. You gotta blow it to smithereens because if you don't blow the bridge up, then you might decide to cross it again one day. But see, what I do is I make sure there is no possibility of ever crossing a bridge that I don't wanna cross again. So what I do is, people think that I'm crazy. Let me tell you something, there's a method to my madness. And I, anybody who thinks I'm just off the wall crazy is not very smart and not very perceptive. Because a perceptive person, and my friend told me this, he said, a perceptive person will see what you do. He said, I know you, you're not crazy, there ain't shit wrong with you. He said, you acting a damn fool because you want to make sure you and that man never cross paths again. And the only way to do that is to do such so much shit that he can never come back and you can never come back. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it still works out to my favor. No matter how, no matter how I slice it, it all still works out to my favor. Because 
I don't get stuck with someone that's not meant for me and I don't waste any more time in my life. There's no time to waste. I got kids, I got grandkids, I got things that I could be doing with my time that's precious instead of wasting it with a man that is not for me. You understand what I'm saying? That is not meant for me and that is not good for me. And at this point in my life, I know exactly what is good for me and what is not. And he wasn't good for me. He wasn't meant for me and he wasn't good for me. And I knew that even before I laid down with him. That's why it took me so long to make the decision to lay down with him. Straight up, facts. So, at the end of the day, yes, my interference caused their relationship to get even stronger. And like I said, I want them to get married. I told him to marry her and he's going to do it because I'm very influential to him. And my interference, yes, does cause them to, to cling closer together, to prove me wrong. And if that's my job in this particular situation to do, I don't have a problem doing that. It was never about wanting the man that she has or whatever. Did I, did, would it have been nice if, his, if he being a handsome man with good sex, sex was good on both ends, don't get it twisted. But would it have been nice if he would have um, not, if he would have been the right person for me? Yeah, but that's kind of stupid to say because the right person for me is the right person for me. So would it have been nice if, will it be nice when I meet the right man? Yes, it will be. And it's not, but you gotta know, in order to meet the right man, you gotta know who's not the right man. You get what I'm saying? Seriously, I don't know if I said that right. In order to meet the right man with the right qualities for your particular needs, you got to know who is not the right person and you got to know how to walk away from the person who's not. When that man got up slowly and walked out of my living room, if I was acting the way the woman he actually wanted to be with is acting, he would not have left my living room. I would have done exactly, I would have been submissive and I would have been okay, sure, whatever, and I would have allowed the disrespect, I would have tolerated the disrespect the way she does, I would have overlooked it, forgiven him for it, and we would have moved past it, and we would, have, and I was not willing to do that. I was not willing to do that. And there's a reason why I was not willing to do that. So again, anybody who thinks, oh, she won over her, no, it was never a competition because I had let him go and decided he was not for me before he knew she even existed. Before, it wasn't like, well, let me see, Natasha or, or her? Natasha or Kay? It was never a Natasha or Kay. Okay, they, this hotel has been torn down. What, the fuck? This is crazy. Okay. Oh. Okay. It was never an, a, a choice between me or her. The choice to be with her was made after I was out of the, been out of the picture. It was never a choice. The choice was made by me. Real talk. The choice was made by me because, again, I had the opportunity to be with this man and to do what it took. I, I'm not stupid. I'm grown, grown. I knew what I would have to do in order to keep him in my life, and I wasn't willing to do it. I wasn't willing to do it. I know how to calm the beast. I knew how to soothe him. I knew what to say and do to keep him interested. I know what knew what to say and do to keep him there, to stop him from leaving, and to to prove myself, and to do. And I wasn't willing to do. That. <laughs> That's just not who I was. I wasn't willing to do that. Okay, this has always been about respect. It's always been about my ego. I'm not gonna act, paint a pretty picture, and act like like I'm so perfect. No, this has been about them disrespecting me and taunting me, my triggers, and my ego, period. They get married, they live happily ever after, that's their fate, that's their journey, that's their destiny, that has nothing to do with me, and I don't have a problem with that. Why would I have a problem with that? That has nothing to do with me. The only time it, they make it about me is when they try to disrespect me, and then I, like I said, my ego causes me to react. That being said, let me say this also. I blow up the bridges. I don't just burn them. I blow them up. I just explained why. Because it 
makes it so that there is no way that me or he can go back across that bridge. Even though the married man still came back after I blew the shit out that bridge. He built the bridge and came back. But, you know, I still, well, I'm not with him either. I decided I wanted, I knew, you see, what's for me is going to be for me. And what's taking it so long is I waste a lot of time with bullshit. I do. And also, and my psychiatrist unpacked this with me, deep down inside, I kind of don't really want a relationship. I don't know if it's fear. It's fear. It's trauma. It's a lot of reasons. But deep down inside, I don't think I really want. I want the perks of a relationship, but I don't want the problems of a relationship. And I know you can't have one without the other. I want somebody so perfect for me that there's never any disagreement, that there's never any bad feelings, that there's never any, oh, this person is trying to play with me. I don't want, no once you introduce some negativity, I'm not willing to fight our way back. I'm not willing to do that. And I understand that means I'd probably be alone because 99% of the people, that's what they're used to. They're used to relationships being dysfunctional on and off. I'm happy with you. I'm sad with you. Everybody's looking for someone to make them happy. And I know better than that. I know a person cannot make me happy. And because I understand, I'm not going to get into this because I really don't want people to know what I know. But because I know what I know, I know all relationships, most relationships, no matter how nice they look right now, are destined to fail. They're destined to fail. And I didn't even want to say that much because me saying that much will cause certain people to, like the married woman, she stayed with her husband because she was afraid that if she left him, I would take him. She finally had to leave. She finally had to admit the truth and leave. And I, I didn't want to be with him after that. But what I'm saying is a lot of people stick into things because they're afraid of what people will think or what people will say. And people are going to say, oops. She told her so, so let's, uh, so they stick it out even if it makes them unhappy because they have to prove strangers wrong. That being said, and I'm going to shut up because like I said, I don't want people to know what I know. A part of me not wanting to be in a relationship is because if it ain't that one unicorn, I'm a unicorn. And if I don't find, if that other unicorn doesn't find me, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I'm okay with that. But I'm a unicorn and I need another unicorn. And if I don't find that unicorn, it's not going to work. So that being said, just understand it's never been about a competition. It's never been about hating on. It's been about hating the disrespect. But it's never been about hating on anyone. Because when I see people... When I see somebody getting money, it makes me confident that, yeah, there's still money out here to get. I got money. I, get. I don't like to see negativity, believe it or not. I'll spit some horrible shit and I will fuck a motherfucker up verbally. But I really don't like spitting that kind of energy. I really don't. I really don't like carrying that energy. I really don't like. And the reason why I spit it out so much because I don't like swallowing it and carrying it. So I spit it out to the world. Like if I'm mad, I let that shit out because I don't keep shit inside of me. Nah, I'm going to let that shit out. Y'all can hear this shit. You see what I'm saying? But understand, it's never been to some people in their minds. They feel like they've won something because it's been a competition. But baby, it's never been a competition. You just had something. You got something that was for you that someone else didn't want. Period. Everybody in this world has been left, dumped, um, rejected, hurt. Everyone. Everyone. Every one of us. Me, you, him, her. Everyone has experienced Hurt, pain, rejection, cheating. Everyone has experienced negativity. But I'm going to say this one thing, though. They say, how you get them is how you keep them. And I, I don't care who you believe in and what you say and how many gods you think you worship and how much favor you think you have. The rules of the universe apply to everyone and they're all the same for everyone. When you spit out, what you spit out into the universe is what gets you get back. So it doesn't matter how happy you are, how much you think someone is by your side, and even if that person never leaves you because you fulfill his needs and she fulfills her needs and he fulfills her needs and she fulfills his needs, it doesn't matter. 99% of your relationships will not last and they will not work out. Period. And the universe can show you better than I can tell you. And that's the fun part. When a person like me finally gets over their ego and sits back and just watch the universe take over because the universe can show people better than I can tell people. You don't put out negativity. People say, God's children. Okay, you don't spread fuck shit. 
and think you're protected from the repercussions of spreading fuck shit. You don't put out negativity and you don't deliberately try to hurt people and then you think you're going to walk away and you're not going to get hurt. And even if you say, well, this person will never leave and this person will, I'll, I'll never leave and this person, you know what? People die every day and life has a way of just when you think all is going well, pulling the rug out from under you. And I'm not wishing, I'm not wishing negativity on anyone. I'm not wishing death on anyone. I'm not wishing anything on anyone. Our destinies are our destinies and what's going to happen is going to happen. But the universe has a way of showing you when you get smug and you get a little bit too confident and when you like being, what's the word? Hubris. There's a word, look it up. It's called hubris. It's, it's, it's akin to arrogance. Hubris comes before the fall. Look that up. Look that quote up. Hubris comes before the fall. Look that up. Because that statement, that phrase, is going to mean something to some people really soon. Hubris comes before your fall. Remember that. <laughs>